Motor Mind. Hi folks, Motor Mind here. Uh, just looking at this uh, 2005 uh, Land Rover Freelander with 1.8 four cylinder. Um, still kind of running a little lumpy, especially idle. Higher RPM is fine. Um, kind of dealing with this a little bit. Misfire is not as bad since I've done the plugs in this. Plugs were done just recently. Um, before I done that, I confirmed that the coils and everything are fine, so that's not a fault. I've also checked all the um, injectors. I uh, actually pulled them out, checked the resistance, checked um, physically checked them, made sure the pattern is fine. That's good. Um, I've checked um, my uh, manifold air pressure sensor. That's fine. Um, this is um, not drive-by-wire. As you can see, it's a throttle cable. So it's not like it's a um, drive-by-wire. It's, like it's a throttle position sensor. It's not like that. Um, obviously, it does have a sensor. On, it has a sensor throttle position, but it doesn't actually move the throttle plate. That is all done by the wire here, by the, um, by the cable. Old school, kind of. If it works, it works, right? So, um, now, it does have a... A P three on zero three four zero, which is a cam position sensor signal, uh, and it's a kind of intermittent code. Uh, so I've kind of checked a few things in this already um, before I kind of start the video. I checked to make sure I had good ground and good power. Uh, that seems to be fine. My signal wire, there seems to be a bit of a something going on there. And even if you look at the code, um, and I'll post it up on this. It'll it shows. It's signal, you know, it usually has, it'll show criteria of what, what's, what's caused a fault. And for this, this one here, it has text in that it is a signal. So I'm just going to check the resistance of the signal wire. And from here, that's the PCM. It is pin number 16, which, I'll look at my wiring diagram, will be this guy right here. In fact, you run follow the wire down to here. There's a plug here. Uh, so we'll be checking on that if there's resistance. If I want to check the whole uh, whole system before. Um, is that it runs into, lines up to the guy in there and it's a yellow with a purple trace. So first thing I do, put the meter set up. If you want to check, let me see how much resistance is in our wires. All right, let's say we don't want to have a false test. So. The wires aren't the greatest, and I've got these back probes, which so throws a little bit on there. So what you do, if you do that, hold that on there, then you hit this button here, and this is zeroes it out, it takes all that out uh, of the equation. So what we do is we're going to back probe it. On this one here is this green wire here. So we're going to back probe into there. Then if I can just one-handed. Um, excuse the camera work. And we're going to go straight in to this guy here. I don't know if it's on this side here, but it's going to be this guy here. Okay. So I'm only touching it, not pushing in. We have I don't have any resistance in that, so that's looking good there. Then I'm going to check. I know my ground's good. I've actually checked my ground through from the battery positive on uh, negative, like for bad, good ground. That was fine. So I'm just going to check. I don't think it's going to be that. So it seems to not be a power issue. It seems to be more of a, a signal. Uh, signal is implausible there. Didn't like the signal. So I'm just, just going to check this guy here, power ground, power side. So let me just. Uh, Check my uh, wiring diagram, so just give us a second here. There's a wiring diagram here. Uh, see that one there is in the red. That's your composition sensor. You can see there. I've checked the one wire, which is going to be. Double check and see a color table. We're looking for. GE. Everybody check that one. So let's check the SW. And is it GR? This seems a little funky. Uh, SW. Which is black. 
gray. Which is going to be on pin 42, if you can see there. There's the pictures. This is a black and gray wire, and it's pin 42 at the PCM. So we'll check that. Alright, so black and gray, number 42, is right. Let's see if I can just focus in here. Right here. So what we're going to do, I'm not going to push it in, because I want to have the extra pins up. So we're just going to rest it on there, just touch it. And I'm going to make sure the connection's fine. So we go right there. So you can see, I'm just, just touching it there, just resting it. And I'm going to make sure my connections are good. There. The other side. It's actually on this one here. It's the black wire on there, so there's resistance there. So there's no resistance. Now that's actually your our ground. Let's check the ground wire. That's grounds to the PCM. I know I have good power to it. I have already checked my power. The power comes from a fuse. Uh, and that would be, I have to check the fuse number again, but I have checked the fuse. Uh, it's all fine. There is power going fed to it. So my signal wire is good, power wire is good. So I'm kind of thinking there. I mean, there's a couple things we can do here. One thing I might just look at doing is just doing a bit of a wiggle test. Uh, I'm going to check on the signal wire again. Uh, it's not getting anything right now. But I'm gonna do a wiggle test on this and I'm see if I can get an intermittent, intermittent open or resistance jumps up at all. You know, like this. So we're just gonna go back into the back probe into that one again here. I'm just gonna back probe into straight somewhere there, like so. Okay. And we're going to back probe it here, so let's just put this down first. All right, so this is going to ohm out the last wire here, just uh, for shits and giggles. Just back probing through that one there. This is a big uh, brown wire with a yellow with a blue tracer on it. So comes up to the box here, and that's all. Let's just double check this. I think I had my my uh, multimeter shut off for me, so. Reset that again. Okay. Multimeter's got a timeout feature so that you don't run the battery down. In case you leave it, leave it on. It's handy if you, you know, happen to throw any box and you turn it off, but it's a pain if you're working on stuff. So the back probe into there. Okay, it's the power. That's the power feed wire. Let's get one again. Okay. This is that guy right there. So, as you can see, there's no resistance. So it says from there to there, it's fine. Wiring. And the fuse is fine because I've got power going to the fuse, uh, going to that. Uh, I have battery. Um, this is a pull down sensor in this. So, and they're an older system, so it's still using a 5 volt. 5 volt reference um, or um, using 5 volts. This system actually uses battery voltage, uh, which is about 12 volts or so. Um, so, what I have there, I'll come up to is that my bat, my all my wiring to the sensor seems fine. So, I'm highly suspecting that my sensor is faulty. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to see if we get the picoscope on it and we're going to look and see what the pattern looks like and see if we see dropouts or if there's something going on so I'll get that hooked up here. Alright, so I've got the Pico hooked up here so let's just go all set. So, let's get fired up and I'll uh, let's see here. Good. Nice 
Try something here and see. So some of those hashes there and all. Uh, just um, a little range. Uh, I'm just using the Pico 4, um, 2204 a Let's see here. Um, it's not bad little scope. Uh, it's only rated to 20 volts. It, it well, protects itself if it goes over 20 volts and too much. It actually will kind of the Pico this oscilloscope itself will actually kind of shut itself down, protect itself, and it has like a little breaker inside. So um, yeah, I think it can take a lot more than 20 volts, but I kind of let you know. So <clears throat> I was putting a little 20 to 10 meter on there, kick it on there. How do we get those, those jumps and those spikes? They look a little bit suspicious, aren't they? Is it interference or what? So that's just a try to get on. Walking around. It's just going to push down back on there. There we are. I'm just going to increase the time base here a bit. What I want to see is I don't want to look for any kind of dropouts. I am getting some passion there, some really some big spikes. I'm kind of wondering if that was her, um, my waveforms going there. Okay, it's just, it's kicking off again. So, this is not a bad little unit, but yeah, it's a bit temperamental sometimes. Uh, I don't think it's so much the Pico. Actually, I think it's kind of the tablet itself. Um, I'm going to use this little micro USB here. Sometimes I think it kind of shows a bit of fit. Seeing some um, interesting patterns there. If you guys have seen that, but I know everything's working right. It's doing what it should do. I'm just missing some wires here. Let's see. Let me make some of that go away. There's definitely some interference going on there, isn't there? There's something going on. I'm seriously questioning this. Um, the only nice thing about the Pico and the software, so all this is all going, I can save all this. Um, I got a nice little buffer on this. If I increase my uh, Sample right here, just a little bit. Let's try to see what we're getting here. If I increase this, then the RPM's up. My uh, my laptop I took the knock. So I'm on to this guy here. Let's just try this. Again.
want to stop that thing. I want to save this file. Let's save it. Come on. So one. Uh, Right. Well, I'm seriously um, everything else checks out fine, so I'm going to call the uh, cam sensor on this. <clears throat> uh, it's not liking that signal at all. I built some this recently. Um, everything down. It's just pointing towards the cam signal. And why well, I think it's misfiring there. The cam signal's going a little bit tight here where it's kicking off. And if the computer's not happy, this you should do a port fire system. It'll fire different, but if it's not happy with the cam signal, it'll do a group fire. It'll fire one and four, and two and three at the same time. The injectors. And I think that's what's causing a bit of a rough run. That's why a higher RPM. That's okay. But it's, it's idle and it's running lower, and I think that's just affecting it a little bit. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna call that clear the codes, and we will. Um, and I'll do a video and see the difference. So this should be a part one, and this should be a two-part series. So I'll have to get the uh, parts ordered. So uh, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Stay tuned, and I'll be putting up the um, the fix, and hopefully um, we can see a difference. Uh, talk. See you later. Here is showing the crank cam signals and showing that the timings are jumping and the crank is working well.